The limbic system is a term for a group of structures that help to produce emotions and memory. They're, the limbic system is defined on the basis of function rather than anatomy. So it includes several brain structures that produce emotions and memory. The hippocampus converts short-term memories to long-term memories. The amygdala also has effects on long-term memory by associating memories gathered through different senses and linking them to emotions such as the olfactory transmi transmits information about odors to the limbic, limbic system because as we've studied um, olfaction is the major uh, sense that brings up emotions. The limbic system allows individuals to experience countless emotions such as rage, pain, fear, sorrow, joy, even sexual pleasure. And from this image you can see where that olfactory bulb leading from uh, smell, the senses, leads into uh, the limbic system. The storage and retrieval of information take place in two stages, in short-term and long-term memory. Short-term memory, a small amount of information is held for a few seconds, such as looking up a phone number. Long-term memory stores limitless amounts of information for hours, days, or years. And the hippocampus and amygdala are involved in the long-term memory. Short-term memories can be converted to long-term memories, but not all short-term short memories become or will be converted to long-term memories. The reticular activating system, uh, uh, abbreviated RAS, is an activating center. Consciousness only occurs when the reticular activating activating system stimulates the cerebral cortex. Sleep occurs when the RAS is inhibited by other regions of the brain. Conscious activity in the cerebral cortex can also stimulate the RAS, such as thinking about a problem that keeps us up awake at night. The RAS is an extensive network of neurons that runs through the medulla and projects to the cerebral cortex. So the RAS, or the reticular activating sy system, filters sensory input and keeps the cerebral cortex in an alert state. The spinal cord, its structure is a tube of neural tissue. The central canal is contained within. It's protected by stacked vertebra, the vertebral column, White matter is myelinated axons that are grouped into tracts. The ascending tracts carry information to the brain while the descending tracts carry information from the brain to a nerve leaving the spinal cord. The gray matter of the spinal cord is located on the interior region and houses intraneurons, those association neurons we've studied about, and cell bodies of motor neurons involved in reflexes. Its function is to conduct these messages between the brain and the body, and so it serves as a reflex center. So this shows the back view, the spinal nerves and, that conduct the sensory and motor information between uh, the central nervous system in a specific region of the, the body. It shows your nerves that you have that lead through openings between the vertebrae. This image shows the anatomy of a nerve surrounded by connective tissue. Of course, it has a blood supply, must have a blood supply to deliver nutrients and oxygen. And it contains the axons that we've studied uh, in chapter seven within. A reflex is an automatic response to a stimulus in a pre-wired circuit called a reflex arc. It contains several parts of this circuit, a receptor, a sensory neuron that brings information from the receptors towards the central nervous system, 
an interneuron, at least one. These are those association uh, neurons also referred to. Motor neuron that brings information from the central nervous system toward an effector, which just means a gland uh, or a muscle, and an effector, either a muscle or a gland. Spinal reflexes are essentially decisions made by the spinal cord that are beneficial when a speedy reaction is important to a person's safety. This is a uh, just shows a um, image of a reflex arc in step one. The stimulus uh, such as stepping on a glass initiates a pain sensation. Sensory neurons uh, detect this, carry this information to the spinal cord via sensory neuron. The interneurons integrated within the spinal cord take this information from the sensory neuron, stimulate the appropriate motor neuron, the motor neurons stimulate the appropriate muscle to contract, and the leg muscles contract, causing them to lift the foot off the pain. The peripheral nervous system includes spinal nerves and cranial nerves. The spinal nerves ori originate from the spinal cord, and the cranial nerves originate from the brain. The nerves and ganglia of the uh, peripheral nervous system carry inf information between the central nervous system and the rest of the body. There's 31 pairs of spinal nerves and each pair serves a specific region of the body. All 31 pairs carry both sensory and motor fibers. Sensory fibers enter the dorsal side, dorsal being posterior side, of the spinal cord in a bundle called the dorsal root. Axons of the motor neurons leave the ventral side, meaning the front side of the spinal cord in a bundle called the ventral root. And this just shows different uh, nerves. It shows the white matter, which are the myelinated, and the gray matter, which are typically unmyelinated. There's 12 pairs of cranial nerves. These 12 pairs service the structures of the head and certain body parts, including the heart and the diaphragm. Some of the cranial nerves only carry sensory fibers, others carry both only motor, and others carry both types, sensory and motor fibers. Subdivisions of the central nervous system include the somatic and autonomic the somatic governs the conscious sensations, the voluntary movements, while the autonomic auto governs unconscious, involuntary internal activities. The somatic nervous system sends information about conditions within the body to the autonomic nervous system, which then makes the appropriate adjustments. Subdivisions of the autonomic nervous system include the sympathetic and parasympathetic. The sympathetic prepares our body for the fight or flight, for emergency situations. Parasympathetic adjusts the body functions so that energy is conserved during restful times. The two subdivisions have antagonistic effects. When uh, one uh, innervate an organ, typically a lot is a neurotransmitter used acetylcholine. In the sympathetic, uh, you have increased breathing rate, heart rate, blood pressure, increased oxygen and glucose delivery. It's going to occur to body cells to fuel response. It's going to stimulate the adrenal glands to release hormones such as epinephrine and norepinephrine into the bloodstream, which is going to help to prolong the effects. So they're going to have antagonistic effects. We're either going to be in restful or rest and, dig uh, rest and digest. If we're preparing for fight or flight, we're not really concerned about digesting our food. And so this just shows the different breakdowns of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. So voluntary, uh, voluntary versus involuntary. You see 
the parasympathetic slows heart rate, whereas on the opposite side, the sympathetic increases heart rate. So their antagonistic effect. Uh, parasympathetic widens blood vessels. Sympathetic narrows blood vessels. And so on. Increased digestive activity on parasympathetic. Decreased in sympathetic nervous system. So they're going to have antagonistic effects. Headaches. Uh, tension headaches, about 60 to 80 percent, are in response to stress uh, caused by muscle contraction to the head, face, or neck. Migraine headaches are caused by an imbalance in the brain's chemistry, um, possibly linked to low levels of the neurotransmitter serotonin. A stroke or cerebrovascular accident is caused by an interruption of blood flow to a region of the brain such as nerve cells. The extent and type of impairment caused by a stroke is going to depend on the region of the brain affected. Common cause is a blood clot which blocks a vessel or fatty deposits that may block a blood vessel. Uh, factors that increase the risk of a stroke are high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, smoking, obesity, uh, or excessive alcohol. Um, there's a syndrome uh, termed neglect syndrome wherein damage to the right posterior part of the brain individu the individual will behave as if the left side of things uh, even their own body parts don't exist uh, possibly combing hair only on the right side maybe only eating only on the right side. A coma is caused by trauma to neurons in regions of the brain that are responsible for stimulating the cerebrum, that reticular activating system that we studied about earlier that gives us our, our wake of consciousness. A coma can be caused by mechanical shock such as a blow to the head, uh, tumors, infections, drug overdose, or failure of uh, the kidney or liver. Uh, during a coma, a person is totally unresponsible, unresponsive to all sensory input and cannot be awakened. So it differs from a deep sleep. Spinal cord injury results in the loss of function below the site of injury. And depending on which nerve tracts are damaged, injury may result in paralysis, loss of sensation, or possibly both. If the cord is completely severed, then there is complete loss of sensation and voluntary movement below the level of the cut. And there are several different stages of sleep. Uh, stage 1, 2, 3, 4, and rapid eye movement. Uh, rapid eye movement uh, is time when our breathing becomes more rapid, irregular, and shallow. The eyes jerk rapidly. Uh, limb muscles may be temporary, temporarily paralyzed. REM, about 50% of the time that infants spend, uh, spend in REM. As adults, about, we spend about 50% in stage 2, about 20% in REM.